Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today in the studio, I am playing with Ranger's Distress Paints, and these are pretty interesting paints. They're not like any other paint that we're normally used to working with, especially acrylics. They're very fluid, and they just have some different characteristics and properties to them, and I'm finding it very fun to play with them. So I wanted to create a watercolor effect. I've seen these beautiful watercolor paintings on Pinterest, and I just love them, and so I wanted to see if I could mimic that effect and use these paints. And I've watered them down. I've got a bucket of water there so I can clean my brush and kind of add water and manipulate these paints. When they go on full strength, they're pretty um, opaque. So it's kind of neat to see that you can dilute them and get those washes of color, kind of like watercolor. And I'm gonna clean the brush out and add some of this pretty blue, it's kind of a soft blue. And when the paints dry completely, you will not be able to manipulate them any further. So you do have to keep in mind that you, you wanna work a little bit quickly, more quickly than you normally would. Because with watercolors, when they're dry, you actually can go back and reactivate them with some water and manipulate them a little more. But these paints will not do that. So once it's dry, that's it. That's what you get. <laughs> So I'm just adding a little bit more paint and a little bit more water and just trying to see what happens and feather it out. And I'm kind of, I'm laughing at myself because I remember watching Bob Ross and he would paint these happy little trees. And as I'm kind of tapping my brush there, I'm like, oh, happy little trees. And even though I'm not painting trees. <laughs> So now I want to add a little bit thicker or more intense concentration of paint. So I went ahead and cleaned my brush and I tapped it dry against um, a paper towel so that I could pick up um, more of the full strength of the paint and apply that over the top there. Just trying to get kind of a painterly look. And like I said, I'm not an artist and I'm just kind of winging it, flying by the seat of my pants here. <laughs> Now, what you can't see on camera is that there was a spot I touched with my finger and I ended up with a fingerprint on the card front. And I knew eventually somebody would see this. I had to camouflage it. So <laughs> I'm trying to do that, make it look all artsy by taking a little bit more water and just kind of doing a little bit of wash. And it is fun to see what happens when you add a little bit of water, a little bit of the paint and tilt it. I wasn't really going for that drips running down. I, I wasn't really going for that look on this project, but it is fun to see what happens when you add some water and add some paint and then kind of tilt the paper and see what it does. It kind of pools in different, you know, dir different directions. And as it's starting to dry, you start to see these different gradations of color. It's very interesting. And then it cleans up pretty well with a paper towel and a baby wipe off the Teflon sheet. But do be aware, your hands will clean up well with a baby wipe, but your fingernails or any hard surfaces, that paint will dry permanently on them, including metal, which is a whole nother um, direction we could go in another time with the distressed paints. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this because I decided I did pretty good with these two colors, so I wanted to bring in a third. And I have to tell you that my first attempt, I tried every color that I had all at one time on the same piece of paper, and it ended up being kind of ugly. So <laughs> I can say that, it was my work, it was ugly. So I threw it away and I'm starting all over again, and I decided to limit my colors see how I did with two colors and then decide if I wanted to add any more. So now I'm coming in with a little bit of the red and I think this is the barn red um, color and I love how watermelon colored it is when you water it down a little bit. So again, I'm just gonna take um, a paper towel and a baby wipe and clean that up and you'll actually find you get some interesting effects on the back side that you might wanna use on a project in case the front side turns out not so good. <laughs> So we'll see, I might have to do experiment with that too. And so now that it's dry, I'm gonna trim it down. I decided I wanted to have a top folding card that is a single layer card, but it's a lot easier for me when I'm playing around with something like this to just play on a, on a single panel and then mount it to a base card so that it looks like it's a single layer card. So now I wanna take a great stamp set. This is by Allie Edwards and Technique Tuesday. And I love the sentiments in it. It has things like, you are awesome, you're totally wonderful. And it's a great set, you know, if you just wanna tell somebody that they are fantastic. This is a perfect set for that. And I'm using VersaFine ink. Now, I kind of, in hindsight, wish I'd used archival or memories, and you'll see why when I get towards the end of the card, but I'm using VersaFine for now because it's a nice, uh, rich black ink, and it's a faster drying pigment ink. And then I'm gonna take my project, and because it still has some warping, because I didn't wanna take the time to set it 
under a heavy book overnight. I'm just going to use some Be Creative tape all around the outer edges and then put a couple pieces there across the middle. This will make sure that thing is cemented solid to my base card and it won't lift up and pucker. So I'll remove those pieces there in the middle and then on the outer edges I'm just going to flip that over to the side and flip it out on the side and you'll see why in a second but I'm going to do that to all of those outer pieces there and then when I go to mount it I can actually secure it to the front of the card with the pieces that are in the center and then I can when I'm sure it's perfect I can grab those tabs and then continue pulling those away and then my card will be permanently um, mounted together because once that be creative tape goes down that sucker is not coming apart you'll destroy the whole thing trying to get it apart if it's not on there straight so <laughs> that's kind of my safety uh, for getting that on there and then I wanted to use some of these uh, wood veneers these are by Studio Calico and I love these little wood veneers and three seems to be that odd number that makes my eye all happy so I'm just going to take these little diamond shaped Harlequin shaped pieces in graduating sizes and I'm going to glue those on with some glossy accents. You could use glue dots if you wanted to but I really like uh, glossy accents for this because it dries clear and it sets up pretty quickly. And as you can see I kind of bungled that and that's why I got to use my tweezers because my big fingers get in the way. And then I thought it would be really fun to give them some added emphasis by using this uh, enamel. This is also by Ranger. This is a white it's like glossy accents, but it's white. So it's a kind of a white enamel finish. And it goes on, you know, just um, nicely right there from the tube. And I also decided after the card was finished to come back in here and add some washes of watercolor over the greeting because it seemed to balance the card out much better to have that a little bit more color down there in that corner there. It was kind of looking kind of lonely and drab there. And that punched it up nicely. Thanks for watching. <music>